Sunrise and sunset. Promise and fulfillment. Birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. Time is reckoned differently on land and on the sea. A land lover speaks of the mounting minutes as hours. A sailor refers to them as bells. The terminology is not the only difference. For time on land is a precise and carefully measured thing. While on the sea, it is a languid series of restful moments that stretch between your ship and the wide horizon. And as time is different on the blue, so too is death. When your ship becomes your coffin, and your grave lies 2,000 fathoms deep. Just tell me, Stace. I handle Stacy Sutter, but Stace is good enough. You ever mean to Florida Keys? Uh, that's my hangout. And I run a boat between Key West and the Cuban coast. For 50 bucks a day, I'll supply the tackle, the boat, and when you hook a winner, I'll even string him up and take your picture with him. Just so you can show the gents in the Pullman car smoker, the big one that didn't get away. How can you get in touch with me? Oh, that's easy. When I'm not out in a job, I pass my time in a bar and grill named Charlie's. It's near the waterfront of Key West. That's where Bullock found me. Well, I wish to Harry I'd never found him. I beg your pardon? Yeah. Is your name Stacy Sutter? That's me. I'm Mitchell Bullock. I'm staying at the Tropic Imperial. They told me I'd find you at the bar here. Uh, glad to know you, Mr. Bullock. What's in your mind? Oh, fishing. Good fishing? That's why I came to the Keys. They tell me you're the best fisherman to cost. <laughs> I manage to hook one every now and then. I'd like you to take me out tomorrow. Huh? Add myself and my companion. You will supply all the necessities that I manage. Yeah, sure. Bait, tackle, fast boat, cut the sandwiches, and a bottle of beer. <laughs> You've got to dig up the fish yourself. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Providing you show me where to find them. Uh, 50 bucks a day, Mr. Bullock, from 7 a.m. to 5 and a half to uh, Show me some real good fishing station. I'll raise that to a hundred. Yeah, I'll see what I can do for you. Bullock, I'll be looking all over for you. Diana, my dear, I want you to meet Mr. Sutter. He's taking us fishing in the morning. Oh, this is uh, Diana Lee. Fishing? You, you mean deep sea fishing? Yes, we'll have a little excitement for a change. I'm getting tired of lying around in a beach chair. Oh, but isn't that a strenuous sport, Mr. Sutter, and dangerous? Yes, yeah, strenuous, sure. Dangerous? Oh, huh? that all depends. Nothing can happen as long as you don't fall into the drink, and, uh... Oh, so far, I'm not the customer. <laughs> <laughs> Diana's my nurse and my closest companion. She's always worried about me. Your nurse? Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I just like to pamper myself, that's all. And Diana is an oh, excellent company. Well, I don't approve of this trip, Mr. Bullock. It'll tell you. Nonsense, child. I was quite a hand at fishing when I was younger. But when a man passes 50, he does most of his fishing on Wall Street, you know. <laughs> you don't have to yank him in once you're hooked, and I include that as part of the deal. Well, that's one part I don't want to bargain for. I'll bring them in myself. <laughs> oh, where shall we meet you, Stace? Well, it's more off the pier, the Lucky Dolphin. I'll be there at uh, half past six. Just you have your bait and tackle ready and watch me nail a whopper. <laughs> nurse and companion. Yeah, that's what he called her. She was over 30 years younger than he was. And well, she treated him like a baby, he doted on her like she was his only kid. She was... She was quite a member, too. Her hair was long. Color of copper in the sun. Her legs looked the kind you see in stocking heads with a shape to match. There was only a nail that I didn't like. It made me think she'd dip her pretty fingers in a bucket of blood. Mr. Sutter. Back again. I wanted to talk to you alone. I'm listening. Look, I'm worried about Mr. Bullock. Why? Well, he's not too young. I'm afraid the fishing may be too much for him. Uh, forget it. I'll make sure he's okay. Well, as long as you're sure, you'll be all right. Yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah, well, I feel much better. <clears throat> what are you drinking? Why? Mind if I join you? No, that's all. What's your pleasure? John Martini. Martini, Charlie? Will they go? Um, martini, muy secco. <laughs> Tell me something. What are you? Mm hmm? I mean, to Mr. Bullock. Just what do you mean, Mr. Sutter? Nothing. I, I just can't figure out this uh, nurse and companion. Well, that's exactly what I happen to be. I've known Mr. Bullock for five years, and he's almost like a father. Really? Right. Check it out to Bing Nosey and let it go. You're very inquisitive. And so am I. Mm hmm. I've heard a little bit about you, for instance. Hello. Oh, people around the Keys. You're quite well known. 
particularly by women. So what? So nothing. Your reputation is rather intriguing, that's all. No, you mean there's enough dirt on it to keep you interested. I also hear you're tough. Oh, I get by. Tough and not too particular about your uh, activities outside of fishing. Look, lady, I got to deal with Bullock. We're going to catch fish. You're coming aboard to hold his hand and feed him till. Now let's stick to the subject. That's what you say. Yeah. Well, here's Mac. Mac, good fishing. Next morning, we got an early start, and I headed my tub due south. Bullock and his nurse were sitting forward while I was in the cabin trying to bait the hooks when I kept an eye on the course. Well, after about 20 minutes or so, she came back to where I was parked. And she was wearing one of those... Uh, one of those open midriff sunsuits with a handkerchief around her hair. And another day, it might look sloppy. My hurt looked just right. What are you doing? Uh, baiting the hooks. What kind of fish is that? Michael. Oh, it's awfully big for bait. Yeah, well, the kind we're going after, lady. To... You've got big appetite. You wouldn't bet a fin at anything smaller. I wish you wouldn't call me lady. It sounds so cheap. My name's Diana. Mine's Space. Do you want me to uh, hold that wheel while you finish baiting? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, it's fun being out here in a boat like this. Seems fun to breathe. Well, we got a nice day for fishing. Mm. Hey, watch out. Oh, well, what's happening? I've got that hook in your sleeve. You mm. walked in it. Don't move. Mm. Mm. Out? Yeah. Oh, I've seen a hook that big. Well, look at your arm. I want to see if you were scratched or something. Oh, I don't think so, but you can look. You're all right. Then uh, why don't you let my arm go? Or uh, do I have the skin you like to touch? <laughs> you better stick to your fishing, Stacy. It kind of gives you more satisfaction. That's another thing I couldn't get used to, a laugh. The Roman dames must have laughed like that when they threw the boys to the lions. I made up my mind to keep my distance from Diana Lee. I had a feeling she might turn out to be candy-coated. Poison. On our out, we hit a spot I figured was good. I had a line trawling from each side of the boat, and I was using my heaviest tackle. We grew up a thousand pounds of fish. And I was ready to settle for half. All right, you take this third line, Mr. Bullock, and stay in your seat, eh? What are you doing, Steve? Oh, no, I'm strapping you in. What, 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 what for? Oh, I want to keep on the safe side. Oh, that is necessary. <laughs> Look, Mr. Bullock, the fish are not going to get mad if you get strapped into your seat, and it's not going to spoil your fun. Oh. Take it easy and play it safe. Oh. All right, all right. I, but I still think that's a necessary. Five seconds to get back to the cabin, another ten to yank the gaff out of its hope. No, maybe twenty. It was stuck. I'd say maybe half a minute was as much as I took before I heard a... Oh, no! What happened? What's going on? I said, Mr. Bullock, the staff broke. He's falling off the boat. Which way? I don't see him. Over oh. here! Oh. Do something. Yes. I'll go and ask him. Hey. Hey. Look. Look, Mr. Bullock! What she saw? A pair of things swimming side by side. Tiger sharks. Maybe we didn't know where Bullock was. But they did. Okay. Yeah, may as well give up. I'll never find it. It's so awful, I can't believe it. You know, Mr. Hitty's head on the side of the boat going under like a hunk of lead. With all them sharks around, he didn't have a chance. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Ah, there's nothing more we can do. We might as well head for home, make a report. Yeah, you got any family? Hmm? Oh, no, no one. He, he was all alone. Yeah, uh, some consolation, anyway. He'll be missed, Tom. By a lot of people. Including me. Yes. I know. I, I still don't know how it's going to... Stace, I, 
I, I, I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't know. But where did it... I can't figure it at all. I, I had him strapped in... I had him strapped in well. Right here in this... And then I saw it. I was so busy looking for Bullock, I didn't even think about it until I saw it. The strap that held Bullock to his chair was sliced off clean. Like it was cut through with a razor. It takes most of us years to acquire an education and months to make a good friend. But in half a second, a man can discover he's sharing his company with murder. I didn't tell her at first. I let her lie inside in the cabin with a handkerchief on her eyes. And I kept the boat due north for the Key West coast. Finally, I let a cigarette blow up the match and let her have it right between the eyes. Diana? Yes? How much did he leave you? What did he say? Must have been plenty toots to make you knock him off. How oh, can the act, baby? You slashed through that belt and helped him overboard with a push. You haven't got a chance in a million of getting away with it when the cops get a look at that strap. Is that obvious? Uh, it spells murder, baby, like it was written out of your beautiful pan. Oh. If only a dumb bunny had pulled it that way. Unless she had something else in mind. I have, sir. You have what? You. Sugar, you're off your noodle. All you have to do is get rid of the strap. No one will know the difference. And what am I getting rid of it for? Me? <laughs> Oh, that's a laugh. Kid, you're cute, but not cute enough to go to the chair for it. Did you ask me what he left? Well, I'll tell you. I'm the only beneficiary in his will. And he was worth six million dollars. Yeah? That's a lot of money, Stace. And how do you figure on paying me out? With a dollar? You name the price. I'll pay you. <laughs> how much will it take? You want to know? Yes. Exactly half. Half? Three million, honey, half. That's a lot of money. I got something expensive to sell. Well, I suppose I have no choice. No, you haven't got any choice at all. It's a bargain. Mm -hmm. Now do I know you're going to keep it? Once I get rid of that strap, I got nothing more on you. Well, we'll buy the bargain anyway you suggest. There's only one way, baby. Is there? We get married. Married? We get married. We sign a contract. What's mine's yours, what's yours mine. <laughs> You're very clever, Stacey. No, I'm not clever. I'm just smart. And you ain't getting such a rotten bargain, Toots. It's all right, Stacey. I'm going to say. That's your right. I'm not getting such a bad bargain. Well, we ought to make a nice pair, you and me. A very nice pair. <laughs> now you can sit them down and you see the bargain. I made a report. They didn't ask too many questions. Well, it's happened before. A guy fell into the sea. A couple of days later, they found the corpse. Oh, what the sharks had left over for the coroner. Diana and I went up to Miami when we were married. We took a train to New York so she could get a hot little hand from the old boy's estate. Well, that was easy. Thanks to you. In case is finished, baby, you got a clean bill of health. Sit now to enjoy the profit. What did you do with the stuff? I burned it. <laughs> I don't need it anymore. Now I get you. Oh, well, we ought to celebrate. No, well, we're not. I got some scotch in my suitcase and a couple of jiggy glasses. Well, would you open that brown suitcase and take it out? It's right on top. Anything you say, baby. You know, this is what I call a great beginning. For a honeymoon. I left the seat and moved over to open the suitcase. There was a hand mirror on top of some of those fancy gadgets with a hand in. Oh, underneath was a scotch and two metal jigger glasses. As I picked up the mirror to put it on one side, I saw a reflection in the glass coming from under my arm. And I also saw it in her handbag take out two small pills and palm them with it. All right, poor darling. Sure. Here's yours. And here's mine. And here's two us. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a better toast. I'd rather make it two. Just do it fine. Baby, that suits me fine. Oh, you oh, oh, Honey, I like oh, my drink. Oh, my dress. These dafty trains, you know, they ain't on rails. They went on a spike. Oh, yeah, give me a glass, Faith. No, hey, no, don't, don't bother that, honey. This time I'll pour. I know what those pills were. Dynamite. None of them could kill a steer. 
So that's how she was playing Patsy. She was figuring on knocking me out. All right, that was fine. I didn't tell her I was wise either. <laughs> Murder, you know, is like Jim Remy. Two can play. Well, she didn't try anything again until a week after we hit New York. She talked to Burke's bankers, and the bell was practically in her hands. So was his house. Then we took a run out to Long Island to have a look at it. How do you like it, Steve? Do you want to go back inside and see the rest of the place? No, no, I, 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 I let not the sight see. Let's get back to town. Oh, all right. Hey, he must have gone into flowers a lot. Yes, he, he loves flowers. He's even got pots up there in the ledge up near the roof. Oh, those urns are... Yeah, they're very expensive. They're imported. The only thing I like that imported is caviar. Come on, let's get back to the car. Oh, wait a minute, Stacey. I, I, I want to go up and tell the housekeeper we're leaving. Well, don't take too long. I'll just be a minute. You wait right here. I stood where I was near the building. Maybe it was what they call a premonition. Maybe I just stretched my neck. But for no reason at all, I suddenly looked up at the roof and saw a 300-pound urn coming down on my head like flying mountain. Stacey! <laughs> Stacey, you all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all right. It's like a... Pick this darn dust out of my hair. Yeah, you weren't hurt. No, I sidestepped just in time. Miss... Oh, thank heaven. I'm going to have every one of those arms removed. The wind must have blown it down. What a minute, Steve. Well, stay there a minute. Oh. But then you saw lots of things. You wouldn't figure by just looking at them. We took a plane to Florida. She behaved herself until we hit Key West. First thing I did was go down and look at my boat. I was glad to see the guy I left the was kept in pretty good shape. Uh-huh. Ah, she's a sweet eye, isn't she? Oh, you talk about this like you talk about a woman. Oh, maybe that's how I feel about her. How do you like to take a ride in it, Diana? No? Sure. Oh, don't get ridiculous. Oh, all right, so we're not dressed for it, but... Oh, man, I'd sure like to sink your hook. You know, a uh, shark hunting is... Ah, that's a kind of fishing all of its own. First of all, you go after them at night. Really? Yeah, you don't trial for them like the others. You cut the motor and you drift. Then you drop a line over the side. They like the bait to be quiet. Then they hit. You think a house fell on you? I'm unimpressed. How about it, Diana? You want to take the boat out tonight and look for sharks? No, thanks. But, Stace, go out alone if you want to. It's not fun. Okay. Well, you suit yourself, but... Papa's baiting a line this evening, and when Papa goes fishing, he always hooks his fish. I figured she'd refuse, but I had that worked out, too. She said she'd stay home, read a book. I know just where I'd find her. We were living at the tropical material, a fancy joint we rented a cabana on the beach. When the nights got warm, we'd use it, didn't Taking it easy until it was time to go to sleep. She was in the cabana when I got there, about 9 p.m. I brought a bottle of bonded rye and half a dozen pills. I thought you went out fishing. No, I'm going. I got a little time. I've got to go out late for shark. <sighs> What's the bottle for? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Diana, we've been sort of drifting apart in the last few weeks. I think we ought to bury the hatchet. I'm not angry with you, darling. Is that what you're thinking? No, I just want to make sure. Anyway, here's a toast to, uh, to a newborn friendship. <laughs> Bottoms up. Bottoms <laughs> up. And that does fine. Four knockout pills were enough for a hippo, and inside of five minutes she was flat on the floor unconscious. She didn't wake up as I lifted her in my arms, carried across the beach to where my boat was moored. A little later, we lost sight of the shore. Well, I could have tossed her overboard and let her go at that, but I had a better plan. I wanted her to know when she was going. I wanted her to crawl for the way she gave me a double cross. So I started bringing her to. I slapped her a little, used a little water. Then I forced an antidote down a gullet and finally brought her around. Okay. <laughs> Where are we? We're on board the boat, honey, 15 miles from shore. The boat? Yeah. This is what they call no man's land. No man's land for the sharks. Look, baby. You look out there over the water as I flash my light. <laughs> sharks. Sharks are plenty. They're all hungry, too. And you, you're what... You're what's called the speciality of the house. So, you want to kill me? Why not? Why'd you want to do to me? You slipped me poison. You dropped a piece of cement on my head. A gorgeous double-crossing hunk of poison, sugar. You know, I'm not even sure that the sharks won't turn you down. Stay here, a fool. Am I? <laughs> All right. We'll see you laugh the loudest. You know, I, I stood for you if you played it square, but your kind never does. 
And after I dump you over the side, I'm going to enjoy that six million. And you get a taste of what bullet Did you say you'll enjoy that six million? You can bet your last pair of nylons I will. And you won't be around to help me along. No, you, honey, you're going in for a dip. And I'm not leaving any broken straps around. <laughs> you want to hop over yourself or must I pick you up and turn? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can have your last. It's your last. Man. You fool. You stupid fool. Don't touch me. Save yourself the trouble. What? So you had it all planned. Well, so did I. Take a look at the water line, Stacy. Go on, look. You're a sailor. Don't you think we're floating just a little bit too low? Yeah, hey, a little. What? We're sinking. Yeah, now look inside your cabin. I bought two holes in the bottom of your filthy tub half an hour before you came to the cabana. Two holes, Stace, big ones. Then I stuck them with salt blocks. But the salt dissolves. And it's 15 miles to shore. The sharks may get me, darling, but I'll have company. I'll have my loving husband by my side. <laughs> We're still in the boat, Diana and I. She's sitting up near the prow, her eyes glued to mine and we're grinning. We haven't said another word during the last five minutes. We looked at each other and waited. She'd taken everything out of the boat so I couldn't block the holes. So all I can do is look at her. And watch the gun all slowly settle at the water's edge. I could still take it, I guess, if I didn't know. If I wasn't sure I'd... Hear that laugh again. She's saving up for one last dig. She's saving it until the boat is under. <laughs> Those who take life through their lungs live upon the land. Those with gills exist below the sea. But time is amphibious, and so is retribution. The clock will be heard next week, same time. Written by Lawrence Clee, narrated by Hart McGuire, you heard John Millian as Steve, Dinah Shearing as Diana, and Frank Waters as Mr. Bullock. The clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production. It's